Mexico. That was amazing. And folks, as you can see in your screen right now, we are less than one minute away from the eclipse crossing over Torreon, Mexico. Gina, how fast is this moon shadow moving right now? I mean, it's it's flying. It's going about 1,900 miles per hour as we're chasing it across the U.S. That is incredible. And so, you know, in Mazatlan, we were able to see the diamond ring effect. Right. It was beautiful. Beads. So hopefully we'll be able to see that in, in Torreon right now. Yeah, we're watching that so, live feed. Yes, just to see this, this sliver crossing over the moon. That's right. We're getting so close there. We hopefully are getting we'll see so that diamond close. ring too. Wow. Look at this. And so we're about 10 seconds All right. away. Here we go. Let's take it in. Wow. What a and spectacular. It's going into totality. Wow. There Here you have go. it. We are in. Yep, that diamond it's ring came through. And we see a little bit of those Bailey beads too as we're looking at it. Those kind of the lights trickling through around the surface of the moon, coming through the, the peaks and valleys. So what is a what are we viewing on the left hand side? This this almost pink color effect. Right. And so as we just heard from the last totality, you know, these pink fingers wow. are popping out a little bit. <laughs> and those are those solar prominences. They're appearing pink because of the, the helium rich. Oh, but we can see it. Let's focus on the corona here, that glow that we're getting. And we can see basically these streams that are coming out, a lot of that energy and brightness that we do not have the ability to see on a day-to-day -day basis. So with this total eclipse, we're able to see that corona nice and bright coming through in Torreon. That is just a like magical view. Oh my goodness. It Gina. is. Gina, okay. And so let's take, we've got so many questions coming in online right now from awesome. viewers watching this. Our first one is going to be from Justin who wants to know, you know, right now we are seeing a pretty clear and spectacular view of oh, yeah. a total solar eclipse. Yes. But Justin wants to know what will it look like if it's clouded over? Right. So the view that we're getting right now, you won't be able to see that if it's clouded over, but you will have effects going on, right? You'll get a change in the temperature. So the temperature will drop. It'll still get darker as it's well. It's already getting dark here yeah. in Kerrville. I mean, <laughs> we, we have some cloud coverage, right? Yeah. And we're feeling a little extra wind. It's noticeably darker despite the clouds that we have. So you'll get some of those environmental effects, even if it's cloudy where you are. And so a great follow-up, you know, we've got Halloween Ghoul on YouTube who wants to know, again, Will the temperature change during totality, which I know you mentioned that it will get a little bit cold, cooler, yes. but do you know about how many degrees we can expect? Yeah, you know, it depends on the location, the humidity, multiple factors, but it can change by about 10 degrees or so, depending where you are, maybe even a little bit more than that. And, you know, we're feeling a little chilly kind of where we're sitting compared to what it was earlier. And I mean, I'm just staring at this view of totality that we have in right. Korean. So we're about halfway through totality right now in Torreon, Mexico. And again, I know folks said that this is almost double totality than 2017, right? That's right. That's right. And so in 2017, we had a little more than two minutes. So we're lucky enough this time that we have over four minutes in some places too. This is so beautiful. And so our next question from Sibel on Instagram wants to know why is the sun more active right now? Oh, so the sun is more active because we have an 11 year solar cycle. The sun goes from solar maximum to solar minimum where it's changing its level of activity. Oh, and as you're oh, seeing, seeing the screen, yeah, so I see in that the bottom right there, we can see that prominence extending out. And as we heard earlier in Mazatlan, you know, that is potentially the beginning of space weather activity. So we're talking about solar maximum. If there's a time to see any of that space weather activity during the total solar eclipse, wow. this is the time to do it. So let's watch that as we go through totality in our other locations too. And maybe we'll be lucky to see some of these features change for us. That is so beautiful. It is. And so Gina too, you know, how um, we're, in a, we're in a higher cycle uh, solar cycle right now. How many years, you know, is that fluctuation? Right. The, the solar cycle goes on for 11 years when it peaks in activity, and that's where we are. Where the latest predictions are, are that we will reach that wow. maximum sometime this year, and then we'll decrease in activity going back down to solar minimum. And so, Gina, I've got time for one more quick question from Christopher on X who wants to know which other planets have the best eclipses. Oh, okay, well, that's right. So eclipses don't only happen on Earth. Let's talk about Mars for the fact that 
Mars does have eclipses when the moon crosses in front of Mars. Mars has two moons, and the, the rovers on the surface have captured images of those. But no other planet has a view quite like this, right? Nope, that is special for us. Just the distance and the size of the moon makes it such that it will completely block the sun as it's doing today. Wow. And you wow. can see there's that diamond ring effect as we are coming out of totality in Corion. What an incredible wow, it's a bright one view. too. Look at that. That is a bright one. And so is this a, this is what, a Bailey's bead or? So that, that's going to be that diamond ring, just how bright it is. Bailey beads are a little bit smaller as they kind of bubble over the surface, but folks who are in that location should have those safety viewing glasses back on so that they can now view the partial eclipse that they are experiencing. Well, that is fantastic. And you know, the next time we see this eclipse, it's going to be right here in Kerrville, Texas. So folks, the countdown is on. We've got about 10 minutes until we see this That's with our right. own eyes. You can hear people in, Yes, big <laughs> moment right here in Kerrville. For now, let's check back in with Lauren at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thanks, Tahira. We are getting close to Eclipse ourselves, but for now, we have a very special guest, NASA's very own Pam Melroy, Deputy Administrator and former astronaut. Pam, it's good to see you. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm so excited. It's very exciting. So what's it like being in Indianapolis for an exciting event like this? <laughs> well, it's a beautiful day here. And I love the fact that we're here with thousands of people in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway but we're joining with millions of people around America looking up together to the sky. Absolutely, and tell me, is this your first eclipse? It's not my first eclipse, but it will be my first totality. Oh. I've seen several partial eclipses, but there's something mystical and mysterious and in some ways unifying about a total eclipse. And we're all gonna feel it together. Absolutely, we could not have looked out more on this weather today. So as a former astronaut, we know that sun science and space weather are very important to keeping our astronauts safe. What is um, space weather and why do we care about it? What is NASA doing to study it? Yeah, that's right, it's actually very important. It is of concern for astronauts who are in space because they experience the radiation of the sun that comes from solar flares and solar weather. But the reality is it's also affecting life here on Earth. It impacts the upper reaches of our atmosphere called the ionosphere, which is an electrified part of our atmosphere that is a conduit for communications. Um, it's, it's critically important. It can even affect power grids. And of course, if you ever have seen the Northern Lights, you've seen the effect of solar weather. So, but really the focus for today is where that solar weather starts, and that's in the corona, the sun's atmosphere. It's very unusual, and we don't exactly know what's happening because the sun's atmosphere is millions of degrees hotter than the surface of the sun. So we are hoping to learn today more about how that happens and why that happens so that we can better predict those solar flares and those things that impact us here on Earth. Yeah, that's all extremely important and something that we're learning a lot today too. Pam, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. As we've learned, solar eclipses are very important to learn for many, many reasons. We have radio telescope operators who are studying the eclipse today for this very reason. Let's take a look at that work. When the moon blocks the sun during a solar eclipse, there is a noticeable impact on Earth's upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere. These changes can affect radio communications, including amateur radio, also known as ham radio. Ham radio is a way you can talk to people all around the world. You set up a radio, an antenna. You talk into the radio, the radio sends a signal up to the antenna, the antenna sends the signal up to the sky, it bounces off of the electrified layer of the sky back down to Earth where you can talk to the person on the other side. During the 2024 total solar eclipse, the Ham Sci Citizen Science Project is inviting ham radio operators to transmit radio signals. The goal is to have people make as many radio contacts as they can with operators in different locations during the celestial event. By recording how strong their radio signals are and how far they go, ham radio operators and scientists can learn about how the ionosphere changes during solar eclipses. Sometimes you can talk around the world and sometimes you can't. And that's all based on what the ionosphere is doing, what the sun is doing. When it works and you are able to talk to these faraway places, I find that really magical. To learn how you can participate, 
follow Do NASA Science on X and Facebook. And we are minutes away from the total solar eclipse <laughs> over Kerrville, Texas. The temperature is dropping, as you can be. I have to throw on a jacket. The sky is yeah. dimming. We're on the edge of our seats, and we are joined now with astronaut and commander of the Artemis II mission to the moon, Reed Wiseman. Reed, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. The crowd noise, like right. the fact that the sun is behind the clouds most of the time and peeking out. This is it's so yes, wonderful. I know. True. Thanks for being here, Reed. You can As you can hear, like we are ready. We are right this there. So tell us, Reed, you know, obviously everybody is excited, but have you seen a total solar eclipse before? Never a total, so I will share this darkness with you. Same. The crowd the first time. Oh wow, God. this is incredible. That's so, too, you know, what considerations do you and your fellow Artemis astronauts need to think about when related to the sun when traveling back to the moon? Well, it's great to see uh, Pam Melroy on your last clip, uh, a dear friend of mine. So it was nice to see Pam's face over there. But when we're heading out to the sun, it's really radiation is our big mm -hmm. thing that we're, th I'm sorry, as we're heading out to the moon, yeah. it's really <laughs> the solar sun. radiation yeah. that we're most thinking about there as the danger from from the sun and the Apollo astronauts dealt with it. And we've dealt with it for a long time on the International Space Station. And we have a lot of data from the moon, from our, our NASA probes that have gone out there and collected. So we think we know what we'll encounter. Mm -hmm, great, okay. And tell me, Reed, how does it feel to be the commander of NASA's first crewed mission going back to the moon Incredible. since Apollo? I am lying with Victor Glover, Christina Cook, and Jeremy Hansen. The three wow. team, That's yes. Amazing. I know, so every day that I go into work, I won't say every day is easy, but every day is fun. And I'm flying with people that have principles, they have integrity, and they have just so much knowledge and professionalism. It's a dream come true. And getting to work with the whole team, the international team, uh, it's the best. Wow. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, Reed. You know, really quickly, do you have any advice for anybody that might want to follow in your footsteps one day? Uh, we always say that you have to find that job that you love, go all in on it, live your best life, be as good of a professional as you can, and someday apply for the program. And we look forward to seeing your application come across our desk. Thank awesome. you, Reed, and good luck on thank your you. upcoming thank mission. You. Thank you. Great to be here. Now, if anybody feels like reaching for the stars, NASA is actually currently accepting applications to be an astronaut. You could one day travel to the moon and eventually to Mars. From teachers to scientists to even those in our armed forces, we are looking for a diverse group to take human to humanity farther into the cosmos. You can apply now through April 16th by visiting go.nasa.gov slash astro2024. Now, timing is everything when it comes to pulling off successful science during an event like today. Let's hear from a very special guest who also knows a thing or two about perfect alignments. Hi, I'm Paul DeYoung, shortstop for the Chicago White Sox. What does it take to do my job? You gotta know your physics. I specialize in predicting the path of fast moving objects at a split second pace. At my position, it's key to know exactly where and when two paths will cross. Just like NASA needs to know when the Earth, Moon, and Sun will align to predict the solar eclipse. Working it all out on the whiteboard is one thing. They're ready for a solar eclipse delay at Volcano Stadium. But seeing it in action is a whole other ballgame. And on April 8th, you can see just what I mean as a total solar eclipse crosses the United States. NASA has mapped the detailed shape of the moon's surface, so we know exactly where the moon's shadow will fall. And you know where to be to see the eclipse in person, even if it's from the stands. Don't miss your chance to experience the beauty of science in action, and maybe catch a ball game. We are two minutes, about two minutes, under two minutes actually, away from totality here in Kerrville, Texas, which will mark the start of our eclipse coverage across America. Now, folks, we have a little bit of cloud coverage right now in Kerrville, so we are showing the Dallas feed, but again, we're holding out hope. We are. Gina and I are thrilled <laughs> to be here with Dr. Nicola Fox, who is the Associate Administrator of NASA Science Mission Directorate. Nikki, thank you for being here. Oh, I'm, I wouldn't be anywhere else. Thanks for being here, Nikki. So tell us how the science conducted today will really impact the future of exploration at NASA Science. 
oh, wow, there's so much that we're going to be doing today. Uh, we're going to be studying the sun. We're going to be studying the Earth's atmosphere and how that changes. You can see it getting dark here. Dark. <laughs> and, um, you know, we've got we've it got these so little dark. magnetometers. They're going to be all across. We have 30 of them all the way across. Um, that I'm going to hold it up. Very nice. Love magnetometers. Magnetometers. And um, we're going to we're gonna be having these all the way across the path of totality. And it sounds it like we sounds should go. Like we should get it. up. Oh, right. get the Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, my Let's goodness. Go. Less than a minute. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. All right. Glasses on, Nikki. Uh, yes. Yeah, or glasses no. on, but we're about to get glasses okay, okay. Yeah. There's some cloud yeah, the coverage. Yeah, there's some cloud coverage. It's huh? trying to peek it out. Is it is trying. It is trying. It is trying. It is getting sure. dark here. The wind's picked up. You could actually okay. see the birds started flying in a very weird That's pattern a minute true. ago. Good point. Um, come on, clouds. Everyone's wow. Screaming. Yes. You know, I might have to switch to Team Sun. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're there. <laughs> We're nearly there. Okay. Here we go. Wow, the crowd wow. is counting, counting down. down. Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, it's oh, beautiful! Yes! The corona. yes. Oh, oh my goodness! That is amazing! Wow. I told you! No, go away, clouds! Go away, wow. clouds! They're Look gonna move. at that! Oh, oh my goodness! My goodness. I have been that saying all day. So Look how dark. Look how dark it is around here. Yeah. It is just this, this white just ring. Just this white ring. Yeah. It's so dark. It is so it's dark. dark. It is so you can dark. See planes yeah. in the sky you much can. better. Wow. You can. Everybody has just planes and helicopters and drones. <laughs> the whole crowd is just. Oh, here we go. Oh, they're going to be there for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my look gosh. at that! Just this look at that. that and we incredible. have about what four minutes? Oh yeah, four to minutes fast and twenty-five <laughs> seconds to be. Yeah, yes. I mean, this really yes. again reminds you that we are on this one planet, you know, yes. in this larger system. It's and you have to be on this planet to see what we're seeing. You do. Right That's now. why we are Team Sun, team Earth, sun. and Moon. Because with, you need the moon for an okay. eclipse. You need the sun for an eclipse. Some are right. standing on the Earth to see it. Oh man. So. All of NASA Amazing. science represented by a total solar eclipse. And something that, what, over 30 million of us today, at least yeah, in at the least, path of totality. Yeah. At least, yes. I, mean, yeah. I don't know people about you. 31 people living mm -hmm. in the path of totality. So Doesn't imagine how many travels. people actually traveled here. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. This wow. is getting me extra excited about all the science. That all the science we're doing, that we're doing. Right? Yes. Yes. All right, those clouds are playing tricks those on us now. Those clouds are being pretty mean. <laughs> yeah. It was nice to get a taste, though. Wow. It's true. It yes. is so dark. Oh, it is. got everybody it is so up. dark. I'm so happy that, you yes. know, for so folks that travel, yeah. able to see this take place. That's right. And, and it's so been waiting. such a great atmosphere here all day. Yes. Every time the sun comes out, everybody Everyone's cheers. cheering, yeah. counting down. It has been incredible. And so, wow. That's true. Oh, Nikki, what's your favorite part about these, about an eclipse? Is this, is this your first? No, this is my second one, uh, 2017. Um, I was in Nebraska mm -hmm. and I saw it there. But I think there's just, it's, you can, you can study the sun, you can study the corona, but suddenly you see it with your own eyes. And it's yeah, that yeah. feeling of, of just, wow, that is our star. Like that isn't just, it's just, isn't just the sun anymore. That's a star and you see it looking like a star. And you know, as we study, um, you know, as we look for uh, exoplanets in other mm -hmm. galaxies that might be able to support life, you know, we need to understand our relationship here on this planet with that star. And right. so it's just, it's so important. And I think when you see it, you're just like, wow, it actually is a star. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not right. just a bright point of light in the sky. You can see the structure. You can see uh, just how exciting the, the sun is and actually how dynamic it is. Yeah. And you know, it's not often in heliophysics that we can actually see the science that we're doing with our own eyes. That is right. So it's that a is rare right. experience. Yes. Or even share in it, you know. Yeah. Millions yes. of Have us so today. many people yeah. partake. Yep. That's right. It's pretty windy too here. It is, it is windy. windy. And so I know earlier in the show we've mentioned that 
total solar eclipses really might only pass through a certain location, say every 300, what, 75, 75 years. years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you explain how come we don't see eclipses like this every, every day? month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every month. Uh, because the moon's orbit is actually tilted. And so most of the time when it passes in front, we, it doesn't block out mm -hmm. the, the light for us. At this particular time, it is right between on the plane between the Earth and the sun. It is it is actually at its closest point to the Earth. And so in the plane of the sky, the moon is exactly the same size as the sun. And that is that is very unique. That is right. so special, too. Yes. I mean, like, what are the odds? It's the 400s, right? <laughs> yes. It's the, the distance between the Earth and the moon is 400 times closer than yes. the Earth and the sun. And the size is 400 times smaller as well. So it just blocks it perfectly. Yep. It does, and right now the clouds are blocking mm -hmm. it perfectly. But it, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but we got a taste of it, which we is do. very nice, yeah, and we, we are chasing do. this eclipse across North America we today. Are. So excited yeah, we are. I think it wants to come out again. I, I don't do, know. These do. clouds are thinning. Yeah, the clouds. You can hear the crowds, the crowds, the crowds yes. getting excited. We're hopeful. Yeah. Channeling all that good energy. Yeah. <laughs> this crowd has been great all day. Oh, yes. All day. It's crazy to believe too that it was so dark and it's only like midday. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. Wow, and we're starting to get some starting of this. Starting to get the light back. Yeah, starting yep. to get the light back. Yep. So unfortunately, we did not see the diamond ring at the end of the eclipse because of the clouds, which is always a crowd pleaser. But we mm, did see true. it actually it right the before totality. There was suddenly this beautiful yeah. bright one light. And then, then it all went dark. So um, right. we did actually see uh, quite a few great, um, great features on the sun. And somebody actually was, was saying they could see a sunspot, um, obviously through their yes. glasses, yes. but they Had could see a sunspot. The so, yeah. so can you clarify what the sunspots are for our viewers? Yes, absolutely. So when you, when you, if you were looking through your glasses, you might have seen a couple of dark spots on the sun. Um, they are actually very intense places. There's very, very intense magnetic field there. They're very active. And that is what can cause um, space weather. So every every now and again, those active regions can sort of explode and then send billions of tons of solar material towards our planet. Wow. Well, this was fantastic. Thank you so much, Thank Nikki. You, this Nikki. was incredible to experience this with you. Let's follow this clips right up that path. Next up is Dallas. We have Joy and Michael standing by for their big moment in the sun. Yeah, you can feel the temperature change. The wind is completely quieted down. Yep. So the energy here is amazing. So with me right now is Dr. Michael Kirk. He's one of our eclipse experts. Michael, we saw an annual eclipse back in October, but yes. today is a total eclipse. How are you feeling today? It is totally different. I am ecstatic. It, the annual eclipse was really cool. This is, you can feel it. The energy here is electric. If you look around, you can see that the, sh the darkness is coming. Um, let's have a yeah. quick look at what we're looking at right now. We're almost there. We're a couple of minutes away. Ooh, yep, <gasps> just a crescent left. So let's quickly talk about um, some of the ways that the public are participating in the eclipse right now. Yes. Michael, can you talk about some of the citizen science projects? Yes, there are people all around the country right now making measurements of audio uh, recordings to see how the environment is changing. And it is a great opportunity to do genuine science with just an audio recorder. Fantastic. So we are almost like, um, let's see, a few minutes yeah, away. Just, ooh, so minute 30 minute. out, I think, actually. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at the eclipse. Michael, what should we expect to see moments before totality? Okay, so as we approach totality, you're going to see that crescent sun slowly drift away. And then you're going to see the Bailey's beads where there are these bright points of light that are last bits of sunlight cascading through the moon valleys. And then... Right before totality, you'll see a diamond ring, that last single point of light, and then we'll be in totality. We just have a thumbnail of sun left. It is, we are closing in on totality here. Wow, we see a sliver of the sun left. Remember, you can only take your safety glasses off when the moon has completely covered the sun. And in Dallas, Texas, we are seconds away. Oh my goodness, I can feel my heart racing. You can hear the crowd getting excited. The birds are chirping and they seem like they're going into their nighttime routines. Wow. So we oh. are almost, we are a few seconds away. You can hear the a, crowds cheering. Here we go. Oh my goodness. This is absolutely ecstatic. The oh. darkness is coming over Dallas. Here we are. Just a few seconds Ten left. 10 seconds. Woo. Oh, I'm so excited. 
Okay, we are five seconds away from totality. <laughs> One little bit. It's totally dark here. Deep twilight around here. Wow. You can hear the crowd. So the last bit of lights, and we're in totality. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. That is absolutely breathtaking. Oh my God, Michael. <laughs> How are you feeling right now? I, I am just awestruck. I mean, the there's a few high clouds, but the beauty of the corona is clearly visible. You can see that spiky structure just poking out. Um, it is heart-stoppingly beautiful. Oh my goodness, I have tears in my eyes. I was not expecting this. <laughs> this is one of those experiences that you just never forget. Um, I, I feel so special to be right here, right now, experiencing it. Um, and knowing that people literally across the nation are doing the same thing is, uh, it's truly amazing. Wow, let's take a moment to take it all in. This is absolutely breathtaking. Wow. You can see that spiky structure of the corona that's indicative of, of, of our approach to solar maximum, that asymmetrical uh, nature of the corona happens when we're in solar maximum, and that's gonna be happening in about a few months from now. So that means that this view of the corona will never happen again, ever. This is a completely unique view that even if you see a million solar eclipses, you'll never quite see one like this. So, Michael, you study the sun. What is it like to see the corona that you don't normally see? I mean, I I just, there are no words. Um, I spend my life studying this thing. And to be able to see it and feel it is, I mean, it's just tremendous. Um, you can see a, a prominence um, in the chromosphere, the, the middle atmosphere of the sun is a pink spot. And that that pink loop is what I spent five years doing a dissertation on. <laughs> that that one little pink loop, and it, it's just oh, it makes wow. it all feel like it's in perspective now. I can't believe how clearly I can see those pink loops and we the structures in the corona. We can see a few planets out as well. Um, they're they're brightly shining in the sky, and actually there's a a plane racing across the shadow as we speak as well. And I just want to take a moment to say huge thanks to our telescope operator, Vanessa Thomas, for providing these views. This is just so, so stunning. Uh, people are applauding here, as you can hear. I mean, I think everyone here is getting exactly what they came for, which is just that sense of your place in the universe. This is, um, this is our closest star. And being able to see the star like this is truly special. Okay, we have one minute left of totality. Oh, the time just passes way too quickly. Um, the next eclipse won't happen across the US for another 20 years. So this really is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people. Absolutely. Our friends up in Alaska will see their next eclipse in 2033. So I I am like already thinking I need to go to there. I mean, it's just, it, <laughs> yes, it's, I, I, it's like, it doesn't matter how, what I need to do. I just have to go there. Well, so we're 30 seconds out. Oh, so goodness. right before totality ends, our telescope or operator, Vanessa, is going to put the solar filter back on. But let's just cherish these last few moments of totality in Dallas, Texas. Michael, what will happen right before totality ends. So as totality is ending, we'll go through the process in reverse. You'll see maybe a diamond ring, uh, a few Bailey's beads as the sun creeps out of, of totality. Um, and then we're gonna go back into a crescent sun again. Okay, and there's a diamond ring again. So okay. try and put your glasses back on. And that Sunglasses is back it. on, sorry, eclipse glasses back on. And it's coming back wow. again. Wow, the sliver of the sun And you can has see shadow back. bands on the ground right now. It looks like it's almost <gasps> raining, or uh, you can see those shadow bands racing across the ground um, as we come back in out of totality. Wow. Whew. Oh my goodness, Michael, that was amazing. I was not expecting to feel so emotional. I still have tears in my eyes. <laughs> it, I mean, it just grabs you. I mean, it, it is unlike anything else. It's as amazing as seeing anything in the natural universe. I just... 
I, yeah, like I said, there are no words. Michael, thank you so much for being with us in this very, very, very special moment. I feel honored to be here. We truly are in a special place in the entire universe right here. And I, I'm just so happy to share it with you. So now let's head back to James at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, who's with the Eclipse Moon. He's tracking the shadow moving across the US. James, how are things looking on your end? Yeah, wow, Joy and Michael, really cool view there. It's insane to see just how dark it gets. It's literally like nighttime there. You can hear the birds chirping in that shot as well in the gardens, absolutely beautiful. We got a bunch coming up in just a few moments here. Our next eclipse path target here for the NASA broadcast is in Russellville, Arkansas. They're gonna have a long window too, four minutes and 12 seconds. They're expecting that totality kickoff at 1.50.05 to be exact. Again, you can continue to track this with our eclipse tool here. This is at go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipse explorer. And you can see just how quickly it's moving. I'm playing this in real time. You can see that shadow. It's already moving very quickly to the northeast. And the fun isn't just for our friends on the path of totality. And there are a lot of people on that path of totality. About 31 million people reside somewhere on that path of totality. But there's a lot of people obviously outside of that path as well too. If I put on this overlay here for the percent coverage, a lot of folks us included here in Florida are experiencing that partial eclipse. As always, if you are in a partial eclipse, be sure to be wearing those eclipse glasses to protect your eyesight as you're viewing it. But you can see these bands here are greater than 75% view. So say you're watching up in, I don't know, Milwaukee here, for example, you've got a great view, almost 100% coverage. You're not quite at totality. 89.4% looks like you got good cloud cover there. 20% 20, 20 cloud cover. So hopefully you got a nice view up there as well, too. I've also put on this overlay here to show you just the amount of the duration of totality. You see a lot of our places are within this middle band right here that are getting more than four minutes. It may seem like a lot of time, but as you've seen, just how quickly that can go by. Michael, sounds like he wrote his whole dissertation, a five-year piece on those just few moments there. This just passes so quickly. And again, if you miss this, the next time you're going to have to wait for this in the U.S. is not going to be until 2045. So again, Make sure you're previewing exactly when to expect that peak time of coverage wherever you are in our path of totality or even outside of that path of totality. So a lot coming up very soon. Again, our friends in Russellville look like they have great coverage there as well, too. Only 9% cloud cover, so hopefully they're getting a really nice view. But let's check in with Jasmine up there to see. Hopefully you're looking good for there. How's it looking up in your way up in Russellville? Everything is looking absolutely fabulous here in Russellville. We could not have asked for better weather. So we are back here in the downtown depot area. And joining us now is heliophysics expert, Dr. Patrick Kane, all the way from DC. How are you feeling about your very first total solar eclipse? I'm incredibly excited. As, I, as I'm watching all of the changes, there go the crowd. I, as I'm watching all of the changes, I'm thinking back to the textbooks that I've read, and this is, so it was all academic before. This is no longer academic. Yeah, so the feeling is very different than what we might read in a textbook. Patrick, just explain, you know, describe the atmosphere around us as it's changing. All uh, right, right now, as I'm looking around, of course, the temperature has been falling for the last 20 or 30 minutes, but the light is dimming, and it's dimming faster and faster and faster. It seems like it's, it's, it's accelerating. Um, the crowd is definitely getting excited. Uh, I'm, I'm looking around the ground to see if I see the shadow snakes. I don't, but this is just really exciting. It really is. Honestly, like you said, we're feeling that cooler weather. Yeah. The crowd behind us just erupted. We're also feeling them fall a little bit quieter, too. Right. So we're going to take a, a beat of silence as we get into totality. I think we're, we're less than about 15 seconds away. So we're going to also look over our shoulder with yep. our solar with clip our glasses solar still clip on glasses. until we are in totality. Here we go. Just a sliver of the sun left. Getting close. Crowd getting excited. The crowd, yeah, all around us, completely electric. Going. Going. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Here we are. Here we go. And. And the crowd goes wild. God. Oh my. Wow. We got some Bailey's beads. Oh, Absolutely stunning. That is spectacular. We see Venus over to the, over to the side there. 
and Patrick, it came and went so quickly, but we did see a diamond ring we did at the indeed. very beginning there. Can you describe to us what is that? Sure, that, that diamond ring effect is due to the, the moon not being perfectly smooth. It's got mountains, it's got valleys. So just like here on Earth, when we see a sunrise or a sunset through a valley, we just watched a sunset uh, 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 through a valley on the moon. Absolutely stunning. Oh my. So you said we could see one planet. I see it right there in the yep. sky. Can we see any <laughs> others as we're looking up? Yeah, we've got Venus on the, on the over to one side. We've got Jupiter up here uh, to the left of the sun. And there's this the corona. Absolutely beautiful. That is spectacular. Now, you also said that this is happening during what we're calling a solar maximum. Now, Patrick, does that mean that the sun is stronger right now than normal? It, not so much stronger, just more dynamic. It's changing a lot. Uh, uh, during solar maximum, the, the magnetic field on the, on the sun is, is more chaotic, it's more disorganized. So you see more random random directions for the, for the, the jets of gas leaving the sun. Right. That is spectacular. We could see a, a, a stream. All right, we are reaching wow. that halfway mark already, two minutes into totality. There's even just a hint of a diamond ring down at the bottom. I can see it. Yeah, we're looking at a diamond ring from Arkansas, the Diamond State. Now, Patrick, of course, as we've been talking about it, this is part of what we are calling the heliophysics big year. You are a heliophysics extraordinaire all the way from Washington, D.C. So what does that mean? Okay, so the heliophysics big year started out in October of last year with the annular eclipse. And, and uh, of course, we, we take a pause here in the middle to, to, to watch this particular eclipse, but then it will end on December 24th of 2024 when Parker Solar Probe passes as close as it's ever going to get to the surface of the sun within nine solar radii. Oh, wow. And I'm sure that means a lot to you because you worked on Parker Solar Probe about 20 years ago during its inception. So tell us a little bit more about that. I worked on the on a concept study for Parker Solar Probe back when I was a graduate student uh, in around 2002 or so. And, and back then, the idea was for it to actually dive into the sun rather than orbit the sun. So it was going to be a sun dive. Wow, that is fabulous. This must be a very full circle moment for you, right, this, Patrick? This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. And that, that diamond ring has been persist. Wait a minute. That's pink. What we are actually seeing is down into the chromosphere oh, now wow. of, of the sun. We're seeing a little bit deeper than, than the corona, I, I believe. I believe it's a, a, because of the pinkish color. We're looking down into the chromosphere, which is the next layer of the atmosphere of the sun down. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh my God. This is like nothing we have ever seen here in Arkansas and like nothing we will see uh, for the next two decades. Right, Patrick? That's right. It's going to be 21 years before we see it again here. 2045. All right. So as we are starting to exit totality, of course, we're going to be very careful uh, with our eyes if needed. Uh, we're going to put those solar glasses back on, of course. And the crowd just erupting, falling quiet again as they watch this magnificent wow, moment I am take actually place. seeing bats flitting through the air. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, we will be very careful then. <laughs> well, yeah. And why is that, Patrick? Again, well, those nocturnal animals are, are coming out, right? As they think far it's as they're concerned, it's nighttime. It's time to feed. So they're coming out to feed on all the mosquitoes we've been swatting. Okay, got it. We'll be very careful for, for all those uh, nocturnal critters around us right now. All right. We are getting closer. Get ready to put those all glasses right, back on. All right, all right. We're putting those glasses back on. The crew oh, is, my oh God. wow, a second diamond ring seen from right here Beautiful. in Arkansas, the Diamond State. Absolutely stunning. Outstanding. Beautiful. Patrick, we're going to turn around now and just uh, one question I, I really do have to ask you before we let you go is are you team sun, I, moon, or earth? I am team sun. Team sun all day long. Fantastic. I figured from a heliophysics expert like you, we want to thank the city of Russellville for hosting us, Arkansas Tech University, and our telescope feed operator, Joe Mattis. Thank you so much. Now, let's get back to James Traley over at Kennedy Space Center. James, back to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Jasmine. What have you guys had there? So you were just right here in Russellville. You can see that shadow has now officially moved off and is on our way to our next target, which is up here in Carbondale. Carbondale is one of those very lucky cities because back in 2017, they were right at that intersection point of the 2017 eclipse across America. 
they're there again this year. But the difference is they're going to have a much longer slot. In 2017, they only had two minutes, 40 seconds. And that's not as much as they're going to have this year, which is four minutes and 10 seconds in the totally eclipse sun. A really great viewing window for them to really take in this big moment. Very exciting to be able to track that for them as well. And also some details about this tool here as well. If I click onto their eclipse time here, 159.15 local time, you notice this little icon comes up here. This is actually simulated based off real data from the Parker Solar Probe of what we expect the corona around the sun to look like. And as you just heard, the sun's a lot more active this time around. It's kind of like a, a, like a wild hairball, if you will. Lots of different streamers and things streaking off the sun. So you've been seeing already in our coverage some really cool activity around that sun's corona. If you're really lucky and the timing is just right, you might get a coronal mass ejection streaking off the sun. Hoping that someone on our path gets to see that today. If you do, be sure to send us the photos. We love to see that as well. One other cool feature about this tool too is you can see the actual path that the moon is gonna be taking across the sun. And all of this plays in real time if you time it up well. And so you can actually see, if I go to our live moment here, this is actually playing as what we're expecting in real time, the movement of the moon across the sun. Carbondale just had a little crescent there and you can see that shadow is really closing in on them very quickly. Let me turn off the 2017 path and zoom in a bit here. You see they're nearing totality in just a few moments and their weather is looking great. We've been checking in with them all morning and afternoon. 27% cloud cover, that time of totality is coming up at 159.15, really excited. And then it's gonna be kind of bang, bang for a while afterwards for a lot of our sites. We're gonna be moving on to Indianapolis, all the way up to our final target in Holton, Maine. There is a lot coming up. And even again, still, if you're outside of that path of totality, have your glasses at the ready to be able to observe that partial eclipse. This is gonna be going on for a while. But for now, let's take a look at Carbondale and see up close what it's looking like. How is it looking over there in Carbondale? A couple more minutes. Well, the crowds are going nuts here in Carbondale at SIU at Saluki Stadium. Bob Bear is with us, and Bob, it's amazing. I, I'm afraid to look up. I know it's not quite ready yet, but tell us, what do you expect here for the eclipse today? Good weather. It's good weather right now. We have high clouds, so totality is going to look just a little bit fuzzy to us, a little bit hazy, but we are moments away from seeing the diamond ring here. This is awesome. Oh, I, oh, oh. Oh, I thought we saw it. I think we got about one early. minute. Okay, one minute away. Now, we're today we're having longer totality. So yeah. I, are you feeling the temperature change? Because I'm already feeling the temperature drop. I felt the temperature dropping about 20 minutes ago right. even, and the wind picking up a little bit. And I think, yeah, we have four minutes and nine seconds here. So it'll continue to get cooler. And I, we got a lot to look at in the sky. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm looking up when I can. Oh, it's so close. Uh, it's getting very dark right now. See the shadow. Very dark. You can see the shadow going across. This is the start of it. It's dark over here. It's light over there. This is the amazing. Coming. Crowds are going nuts. We're about to get word Venus. that uh, we're That's at Totality. Venus. Oh, you can see the planets. The crowds are going nuts. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Bob, oh this is amazing. Here we go. Don't, don't look close. at the sun yet. Real it's not close. quite Totality, but you can still see some of the planets right away. Very close. You got about 15 And the crowd seconds. is very oh, shadow dance. Oh, total darkness here. This is incredible. Oh, wow. There it is. Diamond, there it is. Ring. Diamond ring. Diamond wow, ring. Wow, it's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Culture. That is awesome. Look at that. Oh, and wow. Bob, that's, a, that's a amazing. Wow. Jupiter. Complete totality. I see Jupiter. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Wow, this is amazing, Bob. Wow, that is huge. So we have some prominences. I think we want to go look through the yeah, scope. Go, go through look through the scope. I'm going to walk over with you as you talk through the scope. We are right here at one of the telescopes that we have positioned here. Bob is wow. looking through with the naked eye and so you got going to give us some feedback on that. We maybe gotta, on, maybe yeah. some prominence as we're seeing. We What's amazing is how dark it. it is compared to 2017. Much darker. A lot more astronomical features. We have seen Jupiter, and I believe what planet? What what planet is that, Bob? That's Venus to the right. To the right. 
That's I the Venus. Can't quite see Mercury. I think it's obscured by those light clouds. Yeah, light there. clouds. But 360 degree sunset around us. This is amazing. <laughs> it's going to get darker. It's going to get darker. It's going to get darker. Wow, yeah, this is not, already pretty are, dark. We are not in the middle of the shadow quite yet. Wow. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, 246 to go. Okay. All right, so we're getting some live data from the team here. I tell you, it's really impressive, Bob, because... Oh, my gosh, oh, it's getting better. That, that, see that prominence at the yes, bottom Yes, at of the it? bottom, there's a prominence. I see it. Wow. I keep looking I for can't Mercury, believe the clarity. So that It's so it's, much darker than 2017. It's gorgeous. And what's awesome, we have six telescopes running back here, That's capturing awesome. data, streaming this. And well, and that's a big important part here. This is not just capturing image to share with people uh, watching the show. You are actually capturing scientific data that can be used by scientists everywhere. We are, and we've seen totality across North America so far in Mazatlan. Now we're experiencing it ourselves, and we'll experience it after this on the Jumbotron <laughs> from like, the other dev sites. It's like the most amazing eclipse train you could ever ride on. This is a bit better than 2017. I, I, without a doubt, without a doubt. No, no cloud. And you know what's interesting is the cl the, the crowd is quieting down. They seem to be experiencing the moment, taking yeah. it all in. A really special oh, moment here. Look at so we must be getting close to the center where we at two minutes. So one minute thirty seconds. The corona is looking brighter because yes. our eyes are adjusting now. I mean that is amazing, Bob. And and how much corona you see i mean like a just lot. last time That's i didn't like see that much visually oh there goes a bat, uh, see bat <laughs> flying over the crowd oh yeah we talked about the animals now now yeah. we see them becoming active we found a, a luna moth earlier as wow. well but wow. that corona is about four times the diameter of the sun that is massive that is amazing bob and i'm really curious One about minute. that prominence okay. prominence at the bottom have you looked yet, Blair? You no, have to I look. I looked, so though. take a look. So Blair's looking through the scope. Now oh my goodness! That totality. Oh no, that one right, right at the bottom is significant, Bob. It looks like a a, a coronal mass ejection, but uh, don't don't fact check me on that because I'm just a novice. But there's actually two on the bo Bob. You got to look at that. Yeah. There's two. Look, 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 look at the thirty seconds. William, thirty seconds left in totality. Uh, jump in there. <laughs> take a look. It's great because uh, we have oh, telescopes been... out here for people to look at and actually see oh, total eclipse see through it. Corona. And uh, we're getting close. I don't know what you Time. guys are seeing on the on television. But... Ten seconds. We got to cut it. Off. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ten seconds before we need one. to put our glasses back on. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. You're good. You're good. Uh, we put the cap back on the telescope to make sure nobody looks. What an amazing event, late. Bob. <laughs> There's a diamond ring. There's nice. a second one. Oh, snap. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, it's like it was scheduled. <laughs> yeah, somebody had the timing right here. Oh, oh my man, gosh. that's amazing. We will see shadow bands oh. again here. Oh, you hear the crowd. Everybody's excited. That's there awesome. we go. What an amazing moment here at Saluki wow. Stadium. Oh my gosh. With Bob Bear and 10,000 fans all loving every moment of it. Bob, oh some God. final words. Well, I think we just had an eagle fly over. Okay, so, <laughs> but incredible. Well, that's so, one of those things you said. We saw animal reaction, we yeah. heard it, we felt it. It was wonderful. So we got to keep an eye out for shadow bands. We're going to see him again in about one minute on the ground here. Okay, so we'll keep looking for those shadow bands on the ground, but I gotta tell you guys uh, back at the studio, uh, I know you guys have seen eclipses already. There's still some to come, but what an amazing moment. Back to you guys, uh, good weather all the way to the end. Thank you, Blair. We are in Indianapolis. We are almost at totality. With me, I have Nikki Rail, the Associate Director for Flight Programs for the Heliophysics Division, and Denise Hill, NASA's Outreach and Communications Lead for the NASA Heliophysics Division. You guys, let's get our glasses on. And you can hear the crowds start to roar as everyone gets on their glasses. We are so, so close. Ladies, what are we seeing right now? I mean, just the ambiance of this moment. It is beautiful. We're just seeing a really small crescent, but the light all around us, it's so dusky. And I'm and just, 
odd. It is. I'm feeling a temperature drop already, which I can't believe. It's feeling cooler. The crowd is starting to go oh, wild. Yeah. Okay. We're still yeah. that Here crescent. we go. Here yeah. we go. Getting All close. right. We are so All right. Close. And the best soundtrack you could possibly <laughs> ask for in the background here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we're so close. Okay, just a little bit left, and you can really hear the crowd oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. We're so right, close. Here we go. Here we go. Almost. Almost. There. We are so, so close. And we. Oh my gosh, there's that great right diamond here. Here. All right. Oh, wow. Here we are. Did you see the. Yes. Oh my gosh. I can actually visualize the corona. I've Whoa. always wanted to see that. Wow. wow. Look at that. Fantastic. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Oh that my gosh. Absolutely. An incredible amazing. sight. And dark. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Look at how dark it is. Oh my Whoa. gosh. And you can really see those streamers coming out right now. I'm seeing some bright, bright lights around where we're seeing it cratering. And I can see those streamers coming out of the corona. And are those Bailey's beads? Are we seeing any we're Bailey's seeing beads? We were seeing some Bailey's beads that are transitioning out a little bit, but yes, those bright light where the sunlight is shining through craters on the moon, mountains wow. and craters. And look at those streamers of the Corona. Holy it is putting on a show. Moly. And it is dark. Holy moly. It is, it is dark. I, I got to take a peek at the crowd right now. Oh, look at the crowd. Oh, the crowd my gosh. Is absolutely oh my gosh. going wild. Everyone's got their phone out. It is now safe to look at the eclipse without your glasses. Wow. What an amazing sight. Folks, we've got four minutes here, a little under four minutes to enjoy this. Wow. And if you were uh, in a, an open field right now, you'd be able to see a sunset, a 360-degree sunset yes. all around us. Yes. You can, can see a little bit of that now. You can see the light around yes. us a little bit. I have to say, this is my first total eclipse, Denise. This, this is my yeah. first total eclipse. Incredible. This totality, wow. this is a bucket list moment for it me. Really this is. is incredible. Really a once in a lifetime, unless you're an eclipse chaser, which I'm considering I, it. I might I'm become one after this. <laughs> yeah. I quit my job. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh fantastic. My oh we my gosh. so long trying to see that corona and to see it with my eyes. Yes. Your own eyes. Yeah. Wow, just gorgeous. I'm just oh, in awe of like yes. being this person on this rock moving around the sun. Yes. I can't even believe it right now. Yeah, and to share this moment together with 50, 60,000 people all looking up at the moon and the sun all at once. It's just an incredible experience for all the folks here in Indy and for all the folks watching. I, I hope you can take, you know, the, the amazing energy um, and excitement from this crowd. What a special moment for the wow. United States. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? Look at this, oh, everybody. Oh, there oh, we go, goodness. the crowds. Wow. Wow, okay, so I, I think we're seeing, yep, those beautiful prominences. The corona is just putting on such a show right now. Yes. It's got my full attention. Wow. That's all I can watch. Holy cow. Oh, we've got some so uh, some, some very um, appropriate music on, yeah, going yeah, on yeah, in so, the background yes. here. This is the best version of getting mooned that I have ever <laughs> experienced in my life. Don't strain your eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I am just in awe. There just aren't oh, the right words to describe this. I'm just noticing it feels so strange to me right now. Like yes. I feel the hair on my arm wow. standing up. I feel like it's nighttime and I'm, what it am is. I doing? And, and it was and, daytime. And actually folks, we are starting to get some nighttime insects coming out. Uh, yes, yes, we're <laughs> starting to see bugs. Yeah, we are seeing yes. bugs in light. It's hard to hear them over the crowd, the but crowd. I can definitely see yes. them flying. Yes, I think the, the animals are a little bit confused. Nikki, while I have you, you know, we've got a lot of programs at NASA looking at the sun, no eclipse glasses required. As the Associate Director of Flight Programs, tell me, what can we expect NASA to be sending to the sun in the few in next well, few years? We are so lucky in the midst of this incredible time of solar max. We're getting ready oh, to oh, the oh, diamond oh, ring right now. The diamond ring. Rain. Take a look, take a look. Put your glasses back on, be safe. That is the diamond ring, folks. Wow, spectacular. Oh my gosh. You can even hear fireworks in the distance. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. And the light is already starting oh, to wow. change. It really is. You can hear <laughs> Wow. And yeah. the crowd is oh, oh, yes. yes. the crowd oh, my gosh. Of it. oh, what a moment. <laughs> I 
<laughs> love those fireworks. Indi Indianapolis is really pulling out all of the stops and we love them for it. I also want to take a moment here to thank our two telescope operators, John and Dana, who have been providing these telescope views wow. for us there from Ball State University. Thank you very much to John and Dana. All right. It's like somebody flipped the lights back on. I, it's so it's like a sudden lighting. switch flip. This is so crazy. And I can feel it warming up already. Yes. Wow. This is so amazing. incredible. Well, this is an incredible, incredible moment and a, a incredible, incredible moment for the Helio Big Year. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. This has been fantastic. Oh, thank, thank you, you for, for having me and sharing this. I'm so excited yes. to be here and to see this incredible sight. Absolutely. Megan and Sarah, back to you. Oh, that was so fun to experience and I can't wait for us to do it now. Take a look at this drone shot where you can see it definitely got noticeably darker. We feel it here, it's colder. The crowd is cheering now. They're ready for totality here in Cleveland, Ohio. We are about three, we are less than three minutes away, two minutes and 18 seconds away from totality here in Cleveland, Ohio. The crowd over here to our you right really going feel crazy, the feeling the excitement. I'm ready for this. How are you? Yeah, it's super cool. It's all of a sudden it's really getting dark and you're starting to feel it. Yeah, so cool. I, it's like they just dimmed it out. Now it's like night. It, it, this <laughs> happened within the last like couple of seconds. But let's take a look around because obviously we're not the only ones enjoying uh, the total solar eclipse today. We have some watch. Uh, uh, we have some eclipse viewing events that we've seen around the country. So why don't we take a look at some of those? Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so this so is cool. Times Square. That's the NASDAQ Tower. And they are taking our feed live right now. And we're seeing awesome. Cleveland, Ohio sun. They're only going to get a partial eclipse today, but they get to watch our eclipse with us. So. Yeah, I'm really glad that they can do that. Wow, look, that sliver of a crescent just left. It's actually perfect on that building, the, sh the shape of that building, right? <laughs> and we can see some people in the foreground taking a look, stopping to watch. It's hard to stop in Times Square, right? But they're <laughs> stopping to take a look at this with us. Beautiful. Oh, awesome. So this is just next to us. This is Progressive Field here in Cleveland, Ohio. So they, the Guardians have their opening day today, and the first pitch is like five after 5 o'clock. But as you can see, they've opened up the stadium, and people are in there to yeah, enjoy. Yeah, big the crowd eclipse. in there to watch that. That's great. Yeah. You can, oh, my gosh, oh it gosh. just got darker here. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. That's so interesting. And then Mentor Civic Amphitheater again, the, the, the field starting to fill, and everybody looking up at the sky for their opportunity to see today's solar eclipse. This is us back here in Cleveland. Everybody looking up at the sky. We have that 30 crowd. seconds, 30 seconds until totality here in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh my God, I have goosebumps everywhere. Everybody's starting oh to cheer. I might cry, I kind of feel like crying. <laughs> this is so cool. To see. It's getting so dark so fast. Wow, it's like night just descended on us. And look at the crescent slowly disappearing. Crowds cheering here. Cell phones up, cameras up. Five, four, three, two, one, and totality. Totality, totality everyone. Oh my God. Oh wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Wow. I know I wasn't sure because we had some high clouds, but oh my goodness, you can totally, you can see the, that Corona extending out. Oh, wow. Yeah, the clouds were really bothering me. <laughs> we get very cloudy here in the last hour and a half, but we have a great view yeah, here beautiful. in Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. Wow, wow. Look, look at the Corona. And hear the crowd. Wow, everybody's got their phones out. Oh my gosh. No, I saw pictures of what the shape of the corona might look like from, from our NASA scientists, and, and it looks exactly oh. like they predicted. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and you can see Jupiter oh, yeah. and Venus. Oh, yeah, look at that. So yes, Jupiter is to the upper left of, yes. of the eclipse that we're watching, and just to the right of it is Venus. Venus, yes. Oh, and I see some of those pink protuberances we've been talking about all day. Wow. Beautiful. And again, all around us, you see light, but just at yeah, the top like a, where we like are 360 sunset exactly yeah. exactly yes indianapolis had described that as well Woo! 
We have totality here for three minutes and 50 seconds. That is such a luxurious amount of time. I saw that 2017, I think we only had about two minutes. So. And why is that? Why Why does the length of totality differ? Oh, yeah, well, because sometimes the moon is a little closer, a little further away. Its orbit's elliptical. And so when it's further away, it looks smaller in the sky. But when it's closer, it looks bigger. And so we get a little bit more extra time. Look at the prominence. You can see it on the bottom. On oh, the bottom there. So wow. It's like bright pink. That is insane that you can see it from there, from here. Yes. Just like the power of our sun. I'm truly in awe right now. <laughs> and cold. I'm in <laughs> awe and cold. <laughs> it did drop. It's it is noticeably colder. Degrees. It's like, yes. Yes. Looking around to the crowd. A lot of people videotaping it, trying to take photos. It's the lovely backdrop of the Cleveland skyline. Yeah, that's beautiful. We have the stadium right next to us. The, the Oh, my gosh. And again, thanking the Great Lakes Science Center and NASA for hosting this event here in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. And it's great to like sort of join the humanity to all come together at once and experience this together with such a great. Oh, look at the folks. screen right now. Here's a shot of the skyline. Oh, wow. wow, the sky looks on fire. <laughs> Beautiful. A lot of excitement still here in the crowd. Sarah's just taking it all in. Sarah, you're <laughs> supposed so to be commentating. You're supposed I know, to be saying. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so you can tell that we have some cloud cover, right? It's kind of hazy here, but still. It is, yeah, some high clouds. I was worried about it, but like you can still really see and have a pretty good view here. Wow. And again, this is so rare for people here in Cleveland to see a total solar eclipse. The last time was yeah. 1806. Yes. The next time, guys. 2444. <laughs> that is incredible. I hope everybody took the time to come outside and witness this today. Oh my gosh. You can still see that prominence. Again, talk to us yes, about what a prominence so is. Yeah, so that, that pink color comes from the helium uh, in, in the sort of outer atmosphere of the, of the sun there. Oh, it's beautiful. And it gives off that pink glow. Yeah. Wow. Totality oh, here ending comes, here. here oh, there's the diamond ring. Oh! Yeah. Time to Woo! get Time to put your glasses back on, everyone. That's your cue. Glasses your cue. back on. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. What an amazing experience. My first total solar eclipse. Yes. Let's see what they think about this in Niagara with Daryl Nail. over the entire area. You can hear the crowd erupting at various moments when the eclipse has been seen, but we are under pretty cloudy conditions. And David Sheeney is with us. He's a program executive with the Heliophysics Division. Uh, David, uh, this is a challenging situation to be in in order to try to see this eclipse. We've seen glimpses. We have seen glimpses. So we're basically spending our time staring at the sky, hoping for a little bit of a glimpse of what uh, would be totality. So right now, you. The, the sky has just completely gone dark. Um, you can see all the lights, basically. Everybody's ca cameras and everything else are all making it lighter. Um, so, And it's gotten significantly colder as well just over the last uh, several minutes. Um, and uh, it's like, it, it's fascinating to see it go night like this. We've been listening to everybody across the country enjoying totality and seeing it clear. That's not the experience we're having here. In fact, it's so cloudy that our telescope operator, Jessica Bellina, who's working very hard, to try to get a lock on it has not been able to get that telescope feed dialed in because she has to have a view of the sun in order to see it. So we don't have a feed for you from Niagara. What we have is just every once in a while, you'll hear part of the crowd, only part of the crowd will cheer because I guess they kind of have an angle through the clouds to see just a little bit. Yeah, and so, and the clouds are really only cleared out enough occasionally to even need eclipse glasses. So for the most part, you have a, a thick enough layer of clouds that you can see the eclipse without them and it's just fine so a lot of us have been able to just take regular pictures with our cameras let's take a look and just kind of enjoy the moment of darkness that we're in now people have come from all over the world oh, to yeah, you can see some it starting it looks like it's a little bit lighter up there our spotlights our spotlights are blinding these guys can we turn the spotlights down 
So there, oh, you got a little bit of a clip stuck right there um, with the with people watching. So we're just we're just catching little glimpses of things as we see as we look up into the sky. So this might not be as exciting as some, but this is this is what we get. We're we're just hoping to have a little bit of a glimpse. Um, well, we've got three minutes and twenty nine seconds for it to happen. We're all we're already a, a minute or so in. Right. We heard there's going to be skydivers that are going to jump out. Probably hard to see them. Yeah, I don't know that we'll ever get, get to see the skydivers. Can't you know? You can't see any of the of Niagara Falls really. It's basically all like as if as if it was night for us here. You can start to see some of the light come in from the other side. So we're taking now a view of Tupper Lake, New York. That's uh. Oh look, there you go. Right. There you go. Totality right there. We're getting right totality out. right now that we can there see. It is. We just got a really there nice clear spot right there. <laughs> so wow, we got a, the, a little bit of hole clouds. through the clouds so everybody could see. Just opened up, and now uh, that was the roar from the crowd that you just heard. And just as soon as it showed, so yeah, we're we're continuing to watch the totality that we're wow. getting right now. You can see a little bit of hint on the side. As it's, go, as it's shining through. Down there, it ducked down. Yep. Jessica, so here we go. We have another view a little bit. Another, another little view right walk? here. Nope. As it's starting to peek out around. Oh, there it is. So we're going to start to peek out just around right there. Yep. Well, totality is complete. Yep. Well, that was a fun experience to watch and hope. For like just everybody else around here hoping for a view that we was, got it that was a unique experience um and lights up um and suddenly night is turning into to light and day yeah we're getting uh we're getting some light again oh although that's a lot of light <laughs> i was worried there for a second that we weren't going to get anything david cheney thank you so much for joining us appreciate you sharing this experience i was really worried that we we're going to see something <laughs> Fortunately for everybody here in Niagara Falls, we got to see a little bit of the clips. And yes, we did. That was great. We're cheering now. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. As we take a look around the falls, and people have not moved. They are, are still looking up, enjoying the partial eclipse now. We're going to bring in Jeremy Hansen. He is a Canadian Space Agency astronaut who uh, has been at the falls with us for the past few days. and. Jeremy, you're going to be on Artemis 2, of course, the mission. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to be looking over your shoulder here, Daryl. Hey, so put on, cool make sure stuff. you put, put on your glasses. Well, we're, we're, we're still pretty safe. We'll get a lot of cloud cover. But That's that was, true. That was actually, uh, I think, exceeded expectations. Well, I mean, when your expectations start off with just clouds everywhere. Yeah. And I didn't think we were going to get anything. How did you feel when it finally poked through? Uh, I just felt, I felt like success because we all really wanted to see it in totality. And we might have only saw it for five seconds, but we did get to see it. And we could see the corona, and that was just very special for me. So I really liked that. And then when it uh, passed totality, it was like this amazing, uh, hopefully the camera captured it, but just like that amazing sunrise just coming across the clouds. Actually, the clouds kind of made a nice backdrop for it. So that was pretty special. That was very unique, very special. I'm so glad and a little relieved that we got to see a little bit of it. That was the moon passing in front of the sun. You're going around the moon in yeah. September of 2025, yeah. currently scheduled for that. You'll be the first Canadian to do so. You just saw a real special moment. That's another one. What are your thoughts on getting ready to take that big trip? You can imagine I have a lot of thoughts about Artemis II and what uh, Reed, Christina, Victor, and I are, are getting ready to undertake. But uh, if I have to boil it down, a lot of it comes down to pride. I'm really proud of humanity for taking on these big challenges. We're really proud of the United States for their leadership, for creating this opportunity where other countries can express our genius, bring real contributions to the program. And now Canada is gonna be the second country in the world to set a human into deep space. And it's got nothing to do with me. It has to do with the genius that the world is sharing. I just love that. That's amazing. Wanna mention real quick, we are in full totality up at Tupper Lake, New York not far from here in northeastern uh -huh. New York. We're here in western New York where light is continuing to shine uh, and get a little bit brighter. It really is special and we uh, 
we really felt that in the four days that you were here interacting with the public. Yeah. Was that your sense? There's just a lot of uh, excitement around this celestial event that's happening and around space exploration in general, which I find really uplifting. I don't think space exploration solves all the problems or challenges of the world, but I do believe it is one of the pillars of those solutions. Uh, it doesn't matter what problem you're looking at, space plays a role. And I love it when I see our youth getting fired up about, you know, asking me, you know, how do I work at NASA? How do I work at the Canadian Space Agency? We're on the U.S. side here, but I've had some Canadians come up to me. It's just something that brings us together. This, you know, the spirit of humanity. Just like this experience we're having here, it's a very, you know, it feels like community. We're all out here, just humans, just being humans and sharing something special. And sh sharing it together was really neat. That communal part that you talk about. Like, I feel a little bit of a bond with everybody here now. Yeah. You as well. Appreciate seeing you and having dinner of the past few nights. Just happened to work out coincidentally. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed the time. Great words today. And we will all be rooting you on for your mission coming up in uh, September of uh, next year. So good luck. Be safe. We'll be rooting you and your crew on. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, no, we'll Thank take you. it. I appreciate that. And I don't know if you saw it when you are on camera because you were busy, but the, the birds, they just went nuts in totality. Did, Did you see that? No, they're, I didn't see it. They're all up here. They came out of the woodwork. I mean, there's been birds all day, but it was sort of like birds filling the sky. I thought that was really neat to see. Anyway, thanks for, for having me today. It's Great. a pleasure to be here. Thank you. for Fill that out in your Citizen Science Journal. Make sure you <laughs> put that in there because we're doing that. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. And I just want to say thank you also to New York uh, State Parks, Niagara Falls specifically. We couldn't have done this without you. So thank you very much. Definitely. We're going to throw it now to Kennedy Space Center where James Traley is tracking totality at Tupper Lake. James? That's right, Daryl. Yeah, we are still in totality in Tupper Lake. We are nearing the end of our eclipse across North America. You can see our last target of the day, Holton, Maine, is all the way up here, almost off your screen. This speed of the eclipse shadow is moving so quickly across. The ground speed is about 2,000 miles per hour, so that is a fast clip. If you're in the path of totality, really take full advantage of those few fleeting moments to observe this moment. If you're not in that path of totality, or if you missed it, hopefully you didn't miss it because we've been tracking it all day here showing you. If you did miss it, I'm gonna zoom way out here and show you what to keep an eye out for in the future. So this is going to be the eclipse path in 2045. We're gonna come through parts of Montana into North Dakota in 2044. 2045 is the next big eclipse across America. That's actually gonna come Oops, I didn't draw here. There we go. That's going to come all the way from California into parts of Florida there. That is in 2045, so a long time to wait. So really take full advantage of those fleeting moments to be able to observe this moment. I'm going to click on Burlington here, who are also in that path of totality, experiencing that right now too. So just an incredible moment to really see all of this. And Tupper Lake, again, they're still, I think, experiencing that last fleeting moment there. That is just moving off. You can see that is officially now moved off Tupper Lake. Really a fantastic shot. They have that now, that diamond ring effect, that really beautiful shot there. This is, again, such a quick moment, and this doesn't happen very often. It's really a once-in-a-lifetime moment, so take full advantage of this. You can see just how close we are now to Holton, Maine, who are our last stop of the day on our NASA coverage here. This is then going to continue on into parts of Canada and beyond. Holton, Maine, they had some snow the past couple days. It seems to have cleared up quite a bit more for them. Really hoping that that holds out for them. They are expecting a duration of three minutes and 20 seconds to be able to observe that totality at 3.32.05 local time. Really excited to see that view. You see that shadow creeping so quickly up to them up there. So let's check in with Angelique, who is up there in Holton, Maine. Hopefully it's beautiful weather for you. How's it looking up there, Angelique? James, it James, it is looking awesome up here. We are just a few minutes away from totality. You can hear people announcing it in the back and people are getting excited, as am I. And here to share in all of that excitement with us is actually Dr. Eric Smith, the program scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope. Eric, it's so great to have you here. Oh, it's great to be here, Angelique. <laughs> this is really exciting. Eric, is this your first eclipse? This is the first totality, totality I'm going to see, so I am super psyched and I am delighted to be here in Maine to experience it. Yes, and so we've actually been kind of watching as it slowly gets closer and closer, right? And what are we, we're starting to feel it getting kind of cooler, we're seeing the shadows change. Yeah, we're seeing 
the the light is definitely different from when the sun sets and the shadows get a little diffuse here they're still sharp but the light is diminishing your brain tells it something different is happening something is definitely up so <laughs> speaking of up <laughs> that's where the james webb space telescope is and what's interesting about the telescope is that it actually can't look directly at the sun just like we can't yeah can you tell me a little bit more about why that is sure uh, we designed Webb to look for very faint things in the distant universe. So it's very sensitive for very faint things. Of course, the sun is very bright. And so we had to make sure that it could never look at the sun. We use solar power to power the spacecraft, but the telescope can't look at the sun. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> now, as it's starting to get a little bit closer to all of the cool phenomenons, Bailey's beads, yeah. the diamond, let's go ahead and put on our glasses. All right. So that we can, we can look up and continue chatting. Wow, just a little tiny just, just a little bit left. That is incredible. Wow. So, Eric, I have a couple yeah. more questions for you. Another okay. thing that I was wondering about is how we can use, actually, eclipses to study exoplanets, which are planets outside of our solar system, right. uh, using, I think, the transit method. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Right now, during an eclipse, the moon... <laughs> Sorry, you can hear everybody getting excited. We're getting very close to totality here. <laughs> the, the moon is transiting in front of the sun just the way planets uh, that orbit around other stars transit in front of the star. So Webb can look at those exoplanets and use the transit just like we're staring up at the moon transiting the sun. Gotcha. And so a transit is, like you said, literally just when something crosses in front of something else. That is That's right, transit. yeah. Okay. Very cool. So throughout the broadcast, we've actually been able to see the eclipse through different telescope feeds. Can you tell me a little bit about what the difference is between, actually, we're going to go ahead. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we're getting really oh. close. Oh, my gosh. It looks like just a few more seconds that until is... we are in complete totality. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cheering this is incredible so let's go ahead amazing. and take off our glasses we are in totality now oh you can see the corona oh spikes my God. amazing that is beautiful incredible. you can see a planet in the sky that you couldn't see before oh wow and i think see is it? that one of the um Oh gosh, the, the we have some, there's some drone. There's now. a drone up there in the sky too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, wow, it's incredible the rays that yeah. you can kind of just see coming off of the corona. Yes, yeah, stunningly wow. beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. that's got to be one of the most amazing things I've ever and seen. And you can see the gradation in the sky color yes. down to the horizon. Oh too. my goodness! Yeah, I am seeing a bit of that 360 degree. Um, sunset. Right. Yes, yeah. That is really cool. It's it's um, it's amazing. Even though we're in you know the total shadow, right? Here, it, there's still the corona is still pretty bright. It's mean, incredibly you, bright. You could read by the light of the corona. <laughs> I think I would have some <laughs> trouble reading, but I probably could. I could technically read something. <laughs> so Eric. Oh, and actually, we have the International Space Station flying over right now. So they are actually seeing not one, but two views of the eclipse. They're able to see not just the moon passing in front of the sun, but they're also able to see the shadow of the moon passing over Earth, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, I can hardly imagine a view being better than the one we have right now. But if there is one, well, it's, 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 yeah, on the space station, it's from yeah. the space station for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Wow. So, yes, they're able to take some pictures of that. Um, and that is just incredible. Just incredible. If, I, uh, one, one of the things they told people to do if you're far away was to hear how nature changed. And it was yes. interesting here. We're, of course, surrounded by a lot of people just to hear their <laughs> reaction when we went into totality. It's true. The humans in nature have not gotten quieter, but louder, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, you can definitely hear the, the loudness has a different kind of character to it. There's yeah. almost like a, I mean, I don't know if wonder has a sound, but I think this yeah. might be it. Yeah. yeah. Hushed awe. Yes, yeah. hushed awe. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I can see just one um, little red, I guess, like, yeah, protrusion yeah, little, coming down there. Yeah, red spots almost. I noticed those too. That's cool. Now there are two. Yeah. Wow. That is just so cool. 
Yeah, I like the, the 360 sunset. It's, it's a little hard to see behind us, but it's... Uh, <laughs> oh, we've yeah. got at least one, one there, or two drones. Yeah, some... Uh, <laughs> Our robot overlords. Of course. And so, Eric, I know that, I mean, clearly with the drones, people are starting to get involved in the eclipse. And I know that there are lots of ways that people can actually get involved. One mm -hmm. of those ways is with citizen science. Right. Would you mind talking about some of those opportunities, how people can, can actually? Sure. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, citizen science programs where people could use their cell phones to take pictures during the eclipse. And, and oh, we're, we're getting ready out. to come out of totality. We're just gonna... And here we go. Wow. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's peeking out. Oh. Everybody is cheering. We have just made it to the end of totality. We're starting to see, we're starting to see the sun just peeking oh, back out amazing. again. Now just look at the ground, how much brighter it's gotten. It is all already sun. so much brighter. That is so wild. That was oh, probably one of the most fabulous. amazing, but also fastest three minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I could do it all again. Yeah. All right. Well, that was incredible. <laughs> incredible to get to experience that here in Holton. Thanks so much to the city of Holton. And also thank you so much, Dr. Smith, for coming out and hanging out with us and experience this wonderful event. Oh, it was my pleasure. And congratulations to the city of Holton here for doing yes. such an amazing job Absolutely. covering the eclipse. They went, they, it was amazing. I well mean, orchestrated. Above and beyond. Yeah. And I want to say, of course, a special thank you to photographer Dave Bowman, who has been giving us these incredible incredible images from the telescope feed and we're gonna enjoy as the rest of the eclipse kind of ends here going back in the direction that it came and with that we're gonna send it back over to you Megan all righty thanks Angelique so Gina I mean, what do you think? Like, it's we literally have just amazing. watched the eclipse travel, what, about 2,600 miles? It's going across Mexico the to Maine. Yes. In, like, what, about 88 minutes? That's right. It's so fine. That 1,900 miles per hour that the shadow is traveling. I mean, did you have a favorite location? Uh, for me, I think it, between Russellville and Dallas, just getting to hear some of my colleagues and their right? excitement, Take too, it was amazing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah no. So, mm, I don't know, I have to be a little bit biased. We did have some cloud cover here, we did. but to see it with your real eyes was just... And we had that moment, which was... We did, point. yes. Oh, it was amazing. And so it's really cool too, just to think about how millions of us now have this shared moment of what could be a once in a lifetime event. It's true. And so folks, we have time for some more questions from our viewers. Um, and again, we have another great question from McKinsey, who's in the third grade. Okay, let's roll it now. My name is Mackenzie. I am in third grade. My question is, what is the difference between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse? Thank you for that question, Mackenzie. Okay, let's talk about the difference between the eclipses. Now, the solar eclipse that we had today is when the moon crosses between the Earth and the sun, but we also get lunar eclipses, and a lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth crosses between the moon and the sun. So it's really about where the shadow is going. Today, we have the moon shadow projecting on the Earth. During a lunar eclipse, we have the Earth shadow projecting onto the moon. So that's the main difference there. That we just saw, too, those incredible views from space, that's you right, know, to see that season. second perspective view. And yep. so I've got another question for you right now. It's going to be Eli on Reddit, who says he wants to know, there are quite a few solar eclipses in the world every few years. So why is this one sci uh, scientifically interesting? Okay. So yeah, we do get solar eclipses and lunar mm -hmm. eclipses maybe two to three times a year. However, the total eclipse that happens today, total eclipses are about every one and a half years. And that is a rare opportunity for us to look at the corona, study the corona in a way that we can't do during the other types of solar eclipses that we have. So and during the solar maximum. Exactly, during the solar maximum. So for this one particular, you know, we were talking about the solar activity that we were seeing yeah. on the limbs during the totality. Uh, yeah, there's just a bunch going on today for this eclipse. And so too, I, Right now, we've got another incredible view. Oh, look at that. These are live views from space, from which space is just in. mind blowing in general. And now we're also to see the moon shadow across the earth. Wow. It is just 
amazing. So, you know, Gina, to thinking about how many people across North America today witnessed this one moment, right. it's a good reminder that humanity has been experiencing these eclipses for centuries. And, you know, there are different meanings for these events in different cultures. Let's check in with Joy in Dallas to learn more about indigenous astronomy. Joy. Hi, and welcome back to Dallas, Texas. I'm with Dr. David Begay. He's an indigenous astronomer and also a member of the Navajo Nation. David, thank you so much for joining us. So when people think about science, they might be thinking of Western science. So David, how does that relate to indigenous science and what did the total eclipse mean to the Navajo people? I think the knowledge on the eclipse goes way back from time immemorial, I'm told by my elders. And uh, they knew that uh, when you look at the sun directly, uh, you can damage your eyes permanently. And so they knew that about the danger of looking at the eclipse with the naked eye. So people were encouraged to go inside to ensure that people weren't looking up, especially the kids. So it goes way back. And as far as um, eclipses, it's a time of uh, renewal, the sun alignment with the moon and also the earth alignment. The whole cosmic cycle goes through a regeneration process. It revitalizes the process. And so it's a gift that, that goes on. Uh, for many years, uh, over and over. It's a cycle. And uh, as far as science goes, uh, um, there's different definition of science. Um. <laughs> Thank maybe, you, David. Maybe we can <laughs> Thank you. It's been, uh -huh. an, it's been an honor chatting with you. Uh -huh. So thank you to everyone here for joining us. Thank you for the Arboretum for hosting us. Uh, for this very, very magical moment. This has been uh, an experience of a lifetime and one that I definitely won't forget. So let's head back to Tahira and Gina in Kerrville, Texas. Thanks, Joy. We're joined now by Jamie Favors, the director of NASA's Space Weather Program, to tell us more about some cool science that launched today during the eclipse. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks, Tahira. Hey, Thanks Jamie. You. Hey, how are you? Good. And so can you tell us why did NASA launch rockets before, during, and after the eclipse today? Sure. So it's really to capitalize on this really unique situation. You know, things like this happen every day, you know, going from daylight to, you know, sunset mm -hmm. into, you know, darkness. It happens so quickly that we can make these measurements one right after the next to really understand very precisely what's going on in the atmosphere. With sounding rockets, we can do that so quick back to back the way we can't do with some of the really large rockets. Okay. Wow. So, Jamie, how high did the rockets actually go and what's special about this area of the atmosphere? Sure. And we just launched the second of those three uh, just a few moments ago and that's oh, okay. going pretty well so far. These, these particular rockets are getting about 250 miles above the surface, pretty close to right about where the International Space Station flies. And before you ask, everything's safe. Everything's, okay. we take care of the- <laughs> And it looks like we've got a playback of that okay. right oh, now. Oh, wow. Perfect. Can you yeah, walk so, us through this? Sure, so from uh, Wallops Island out in Virginia on the Virginia Space Coast. So these rockets have multiple stages to them. So you're seeing one stage burn for a few seconds, then that drops off and then the next stage will light to eventually take it all wow. the way up to about that 250 mile mark above the surface to make those measurements in the upper atmosphere. Wow, that looks incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, and so what is that area of the atmosphere and why do we care about it? Yes, yeah, so it's the upper part of our atmosphere is called the ionosphere. That's really from a perspective of heliophysics where we really see a lot of that interaction with the sun and the earth. We care about it because that interaction can change the way our GPS signals work, our communication signals work. And even up a little bit higher, we start to see the influence of the sun actually causing the atmosphere to change its density in a way that mm. can impact the way satellites orbit the Earth as well. Sure. Okay. Great. Yeah. And so, Jimmy, today we've been doing this fun poll, you know, okay. to see who is Team <laughs> Sun, Moon, and Earth. What team are you repping today? Uh, well, other than Team Science. <laughs> oh, uh, don't, make, don't choose no. the wrong <laughs> I, I well, my bosses would make sure I go for uh, Team Sun today for sure. <laughs> oh man, okay. Well, thank you so much again. Thanks, Jamie. And folks, it is time now to say goodbye to our friend James Traley, who has made sure we've known where and when to look up all day. James, thank you. 
Yeah, thanks so much to hear. It's been fantastic tracking this eclipse across North America all afternoon with you. If you're still in the path of totality, you might be in a boat somewhere off the Canadian coast taking this all in. I hope you enjoy that view, that fleeting moment. We've made a, a big journey across. I can zoom out here on our uh, eclipse board. You can see we started all the way down here in Mazatlan, Mexico. We've trekked all the way across and are now, like I said, breezing past Canada now into the Atlantic Ocean. It's been fantastic to track this. And if I turn on the shadow of our penumbra, you can see this highlighted area anywhere in there is still experiencing a partial eclipse. So if you're in that uh, partial eclipse area, be sure to have your eclipse glasses at the ready so you can take in that fleeting moment. We just went outside a few moments ago here at Kennedy Space Center to take it in. It's fantastic, beautiful view. It's really cool to see. You got like a little chunk out of the, uh, the sun there for us here, only about 50% coverage, but still fantastic to see. So really, it's been phenomenal. We've lucked out in general with the weather all of today too. That was the biggest concern I had going into the day here. It's been beautiful views up and down here, and so really fantastic to see this. Really been a lot of fun tracking this with our Eclipse Explorer. A big thanks again to our scientific visualization studio for putting this tool together. But for now, back to you, Tahira. And here with us now is NASA Chief Scientist, Dr. Kate Calvin. Kate, welcome. Hi, Kate. Hi, nice to be here. So happy to have you back here again. I know we had the pleasure of sharing the stage together for the annular That's eclipse. Right. Now with today's total solar eclipse, can you tell our viewers, what would you say is the number one takeaway from today's events? I would say the number one takeaway is that our universe is beautiful and understandable. We all got to experience this together today. I love We could this, predict yeah. when it would happen. And we did a lot of science today. That's great. So speaking of the science that was conducted, you know, how does that fold into kind of the greater science that we're doing with NASA in the future? Yeah, so we did a lot of science today and a lot of it really complements science that we do all of the time. So one of the things we were really looking at today was the corona. The moon blocked out the sun so that we could see that part of the sun's atmosphere. But we also have a mission called Parker Solar Probe that's um, orbiting closer and closer to the sun yes. so that we can study the corona with that. We were also looking a lot at how the eclipse affects affected Earth. So we had a citizen science project that looked at how the eclipse changed temperatures and clouds. We have a mission that launched two months ago that's studying clouds all the time, a mission called PACE. Awesome. It'll tell us more about um, um, oceans and atmosphere on, on here on Earth. And one of the other things we do is we develop instruments called a coronagraph. Mm -hmm. So the moon blocked out the sun today so that we could see that corona, but we can make an instrument that does that. And so we have an upcoming mission called Nancy Grace Roman that's going to block out the light of other stars so we can see what's flying in here around them. Amazing. So much going on yeah. for the sun at NASA, honestly. Right. And you know, I understand that the Heliophysics Division has a big sun celebration going on right now, the Heliophysics Big Year. Kate, could you tell us how we could get involved in this and really just celebrate our star? Yeah, this total solar eclipse was just one event in a series of this heliophysics big year. We're working towards Parker Solar Probe's closest approach to the sun. And we have a lot of activities where you can engage in our science and learn more about the sun. And if you want to know more, you can find us on social media at, at NASA Sun. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kate, for being here with us. It was really special to share this moment with you. Thanks, Kate. Nice to be here. And Gina. This has been an honor. I mean, my goodness, it like to have the annular oh. eclipse with you, then to share this total solar eclipse with you. I know. Thank you so much. And do you have any final thoughts? You know, this was amazing. Annular was great, but to hear it, the energy here. The is total was so just great a whole to be nother with level. Both of you, you know. Yeah. Once again, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And you know, a big thank you to the city of Kerrville, Texas, the Parks and Rec team, and all the people that made today's incredible event possible. I also want to thank our telescope operator, operator Catherine Throat, for those great views of totality here in Kerrville. Folks, that is a wrap from Kerrville, Texas. Back to you in Cleveland. Thank you to Hira and Gina and also Kate Calvin. And now check out who we have here at the host desk, the pastronaut himself, Josh Dobbs, who just signed on as quarterback for the 49ers. How do you feel about that? I feel good. I feel good. It's exciting times. Um, obviously, I spent a couple years here in Cleveland, got a chance to have some fun over at NASA Glen during my time here. So it's cool to be back and taking the Eclipse Fest here in Cleveland. But looking forward to the future in San Francisco. I know 
NASA's doing some great work out there on the West Coast, so we'll be able to stay tuned to that as well. Yeah, so for people who don't know, the Pastronaut nickname comes from some incredible plays you had last year, and also you have a background uh, here with us at NASA with some exter uh, externships, but also uh, you're an aerospace engineer. So how did it feel being back here specifically in Cleveland to watch the total solar eclipse? It felt really good. You know, uh, when this event was put on my radar about a year ago I mean, in last off season, they're like, hey, like the eclipse is coming straight through Cleveland. We'd love to have you here. It's going to be a once in a lifetime event to be able to experience it, especially right here on the beautiful Great Lakes and obviously have some great weather today. So I marked on my calendar a year ago and to make <laughs> it back here um, and take it in, you know, and get a chance to hang out with, with the city I spent two years in. It's been great. I think like the biggest uh, thing that I've enjoyed is just seeing the interest from the city of Cleveland and how many people traveled here to take in the event today and to be able to then also go learn about the future of NASA and the future of space exploration as well at the same time. Um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to take it in and it's been an honor to be here. So, you know, Josh, NASA is really committed to inspiring the next generation through discovery. Do you think maybe we created a few new uh, future <laughs> scientists and engineers to, here today? I think so. I think so. There's a, a, a wealth of youth walking around <laughs> yeah, here so and, and, and taking in not only, obviously, the blowups and the displays outside, but also the Great Lakes Science Center inside and just seeing the history of the space program. I think that gives them perspective. And so that's just like NASA, that's been my approach. You know, I think the youth obviously is the next generation. They're going to have a tremendous impact on the world and being able to inspire the youth out here and the youth across the country that if you have interest in STEM and also are really good at sports, um, you don't have to split your eggs. In the, yeah, you don't you have didn't. to split over your eggs, right? Like that's you can, right. you can go out, put all your eggs in both back baskets, and work hard to achieve those goals and dreams. Now, Josh, we have time for one other question. It's the most important question we're going to ask you. Okay. Who was the star today? Was it the Ooh. sun? The moon or the earth? Say the right thing, Josh. Say the drum right roll, thing. Drum roll, drum roll. The star of the day was the moon. I gotta go ah, with it. Yes! I gotta go with it. I gotta go with I the agree. moon. I yeah. agree. I do. All right. <laughs> Well, Stamp I appreciate your honesty, though. right? I appreciate your honesty, and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Josh, and it was great to have you here with us. Thank you guys for having me. Thank All you. right, so we talked about the this controversial but friendly <laughs> competition. So actually, we asked you guys to vote. We have the results of that poll right now. Let us bring it up. Whoa! Oh! All right, congrats, Sarah. Come on! Congrats. Thank you. Team Earth, Thank 26%. You. Team Thank Sun, 26% yeah. as well. But Team Moon, 48%. Congrats, Team Moon. Go, today. Team Moon. All right, again, thank you to everyone who participated. We were the real winners of today, though, those who got a show. But we're going to send it back over to Indianapolis for another really important interview. Thanks, Megan. We are back here in Indianapolis. It has been an incredible day, and it is not over yet. With me, I have Jake Bleacher, the Chief Exploration Scientist for NASA. Jake, welcome. I, I could not be happier to be How here. How was that eclipse for you, really quickly? That was amazing. It's getting warm again. I saw my fleece on from uh, when we were in totality. That was incredible. Well, today has been all about the eclipse, all about the sun's light. And I want to pivot a little bit here because you're getting astronauts ready to go back to the moon, live and work there for the first time in 50 years. How is how the sunlight shines on the moon also very crucial to what we're trying to do there? Yeah, well, just like this eclipse, it's the celestial dance between the sun, the earth, and the moon. And when we go to the moon, we'll actually have instances of eclipses where the earth will eclipse the sun. Wow. Uh, so it's something to think about. But uh, we're really uh, interested in the lighting in the South Pole. Our Artemis III mission will land astronauts at the South Pole. And uh, there, because the moon has almost no axial tilt, uh, the light, the sun, is always right along the horizon. Wow. And so high peaks have sunlight more than normal amounts of time and low depressions have almost no sunlight or never see the sun. And so we think there might actually be water trapped there. Incredible. So one thing that we've talked a little bit about on the broadcast is space weather. And space weather is really important to understand, especially when it comes to the safety of our astronauts. Can you describe how the instruments URSA and HERMES are actually helping keep our astronauts safe? Yeah, URSA and HERMES are payloads, science instruments mm -hmm. that we'll have on our gateway. Gateway is going to be a station, a research station that orbits the moon, um, and astronauts can stop there on their way to the surface of the moon. And these payloads, or these science instruments, will be there to basically detect what the, the solar weather is like, what we call space weather. So that radiation that our astronauts will live in when they're actually there. So understanding your weather is the best way to be prepared for it. Absolutely. Well, you've given us a lot to be excited about. 
Jake, thank you for being here on this incredible day. I would not have missed it. Well, folks, that is all we have from Indianapolis. Thank you for joining us. It has been a wild ride, pun absolutely intended, and we've had an amazing time. So from all of us here, back to you guys. Thank you, Lauren. I did enjoy your pun. And now back here in Cleveland, we are joined by Jimmy Kenyon, director of NASA's Glenn Research Center. Thank you for joining us and for hosting us, really. Absolutely. Thanks for having us here. Well, so yeah, Glenn Research Center is right here in Cleveland, yep. just down the road. The only NASA center in the Midwest, the only one in today's path of totality. Literally everything aligned for us to get a great show here. <laughs> Absolutely. And it has, it, it has been such a great show here. You could not have asked for better weather. And uh, it's springtime in the Midwest. That's always a little bit of a debate, but you could not have asked for better weather. Uh, what a great outing. We're here with our partners at the Great Lakes Science Center, um, and which hosts our visitor center, so where the people are. And, yep. and uh, just a, a great opportunity to have everybody here and connect them with what we do. Yeah. Yeah, you hosted this wonderful three-day event here and invited the community and all your visitors in to come and explore and learn a little bit about Glenn. Why was that important to you? It's important, but well, as you know, having a total solar eclipse pass over your community is for most people a once in a lifetime opportunity. But to have a total solar eclipse pass over a NASA community like right. Cleveland, right. that's even more rare. But what it does is it creates such a great opportunity to connect people with what we do. Mm -hmm. Everybody is here paying attention to our planet, paying attention to the moon and the sun and how all of these things work, our solar system and our universe. And 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 that just gives us a great opportunity to say, this is what we do. Right. And connect people with that. And that's, you can't pass that kind of an opportunity up. Right. And speaking of all, like you said, the science, all this discovery that we're, we're uh, enabling today by the eclipse, you know, let's talk more about the science. You know, um, I know that nothing flies without Glenn. That's what you love to say, Jimmy. That's so right. can you explain the center's critical role uh, within NASA? At NASA, Glenn, we work on aircraft propulsion, spacecraft propulsion, power for both aircraft and spacecraft, communications. Uh, we also work on materials and, and testing in extreme environments, but, but, but our core competencies of power, propulsion, communications. No aircraft and no spacecraft flies without those three things, and they never will. And so NASA, NASA Glenn is literally part of virtually every NASA mission. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here and, again, hosting us. This was a wonderful event. I know so many people joined us here and really enjoyed it because we were watching. We were looking out at the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Lots of smiles. So yeah. really, thank you yes. so much, you and the Great Lakes Science Center. And thank you for being here and being part of this with us and, and really putting, putting NASA and NASA Glenn on the map here for us. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. Have a great day. All right, and a big thank you to our whole team positioned across the path from our correspondents to our experts and our telescope operators. We couldn't have done it without all of you. And Sarah, as we're taking again this aerial shot of the Great Lakes Science Center, so beautiful. Such a wonderful way to experience my first total solar eclipse and i hope you had a good time too because i know this isn't your first total solar eclipse. Yeah, this is my second but it was really great and special to to be able to experience it with you and, and all the folks here yeah we did notice that people right after the people <laughs> yeah. were like Whoa! they were trying to get there's a lot of really fun events happening in cleveland so there's a lot of people in downtown so I'm, i hope that they took some time to look up today and really enjoy what they saw yeah and not only all of the great views that we had but we also have really good some cool science today too yeah really really cool science and actually yeah let, let's talk about about that you know nasa's uh, heliophysics big year isn't over yet you know we had the annular eclipse then we had the solar eclipse and now talk to us about what's happening in december yeah coming up new on on christmas eve in fact parker solar probe will make its closest approach to the sun 3.9 million miles which still seems like a long way to me but apparently <laughs> that's actually pretty close yeah yeah i can't believe that's happening again just that it's all we've been saying this all day aligning everything is aligning for us <laughs> to have a beautiful show and so yeah, you know, Sarah, again, thank you so much. You know, we watched this together race across Mexico to Maine in only an hour and 28 minutes. And again, we have so much more to look forward to. So we hope you all stay with us as we continue studying our sun and how it affects us from all of us here at NASA, where we make air and space available for everyone. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.